there is an African proverb. Those who are not African have not uh, discriminative. I want to use this as an analogy of my homily today. There is an African proverb. Don't try to make someone hate the person he loves. For he will go on loving, but he will hate you. Don't make someone don't make someone hate the person he loves. For he will go on loving that person and they will hate you. If a person loves another person, as much as you like to make that person that the, the person you call your friend is a bad person, he will not listen to you. You have ever seen someone goes to a family to a couple and come to tell the wife that your husband is a bad man, is a bad man, is a bad man. The more you repeat that you, the, hus the husband is a bad man, then you make this lady know that my husband is a good man, is a good man, is a good man. That is African. There is no way we can make Christians set God whom they love every time. They would hate us who are misleading. For you to drive all the way where you have come, parishioner, it is because you love God. And someone comes to tell you, Shirai Don Bosco, uh, Don Bosco up here is a bad place. Come to our parish. Know what you say? I'm happy in Upper Hill. God is good. God is caring. He's compassionate. He's merciful. He's loving. He's providing. The list is endless, brothers and sisters. And that's the liturgy of the world today. The first reading from the first book of Kings, we see Elijah. What happens to him? Elijah denounces those who have abandoned Yahweh for Baal, the god of Jezebel. The queen is hunting him down and wants to kill him. While well, I was away, Gen Z were in town. <laughs> And when, after being in town, they were looked in the evening. You know better than me. This was the scenario of prophet Elijah. When he condemned the Baal, the god of Jezebel, Jezebel not relax. Even when you want to tell the president to come down, to resign, he cannot resign. He will look for you. <laughs> what happened to Elijah? He had to run away for his life. He decided to run away southwards towards Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. He wants to go where Moses met God. You and I come to this shrine because we know there is something spiritual strength we are going to get from here. And why? There are many of our forefathers who came to this shrine and had miracles. And we also want to experience those miracles. He feels that his faith needs to be strengthened and wants to repeat the spiritual experience of the great rebirth of Israel, Moses. The desert crossing is not easy. He feels so sad, tired, and alone that he can't walk any further. He sits down on the tree and begs God to let him die. He says, Lord, he prays, I've had enough. It's better that I die. I'm not better than my fathers who failed. How can I change the social situation and the religious life of my people? How many times you and I have got tired? I was in one parish in a few years ago, and this lady comes and tells me, I'm tired. And I said, you are tired from what? I'm tired of this man whom I called my husband. I used to see a husband a few years ago, and now I see a wound. Ladies, don't, don't use that term, even when your husband disturbs you. Your husband cannot be a wound. And this lady tells me, I'm tired. And I told her, I've been in seminary for 12 years, and I'm not yet a priest. That time, I was not yet a priest. I was a deacon. And I told her, I'm not yet a priest. What if I was also tired? 
And she tells me, if you became tired, where can we get a priest from? <laughs> and I told her, if you get, become tired of your husband, where can we get a family from? Elijah gets tired and tells God, I want to die. Many times in your families, in, even in your workplaces, you get tired and say, let me die. But let me tell you, brethren, God is with you. The desert is a symbol of our life. We too, at times, find ourselves in difficulties. Even our religion and our communities let us down. At a Gen Z, we'll say my church is to let it down. I don't know who is that church who let it down these Gen Zs. But we can reflect alone. Well, uh, we who let the Gen Z down. We are saddened by conflicts, the envy, the meanness, and the gossiping. What happened to Elijah can help us. God does not abandon his prophets, his people. He accompanies Elijah. He does not lessen the test. He does not prevent him from going on with his journey. No, he sends his angels to help him. We must go on across the desert. Our difficulties will lead us through the desert. God does the same for us. He does not do our work for us. He does not take our place. When we are tired, he is not heavy for us. He does not make us more tired. Our tiredness will be on that level, the optimum. He merely shows us the way and gives us the food to keep our strength. This food is sword. Brothers and sisters, you will get tired and be despised when you don't confront God in the word. Use the word every time you have difficulties and challenges in your family, in your place of work, even when you come here in church. The gospel of today, the evangelist John continues what he style last week. What happens? The gospel of last Sunday concluded with Jesus presenting himself as a bread come down from heaven. And we said in a comment that he is the bread. I was far away from Nairobi. Where we were, we said, this the bread. In the sense that he grant us his word, the wisdom of God. The text today begins with the reaction of the Jews to this claim. They were saying, surely this is Jesus, son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. How can he now say, I've come down from heaven? And it happens when someone you know, he tells you something godly. You say, my friend, we know you. You are not even spiritual. How can you tell me to do this? This was the situation of the Jews. None of us has ever seen God. St. John tells us at the beginning of his gospel, John 1, verse 18, how is it possible to know him? Christians believe that to know the Father, we must look at Jesus. He is the countenance of God. Whoever looks at him sees the Father. This is why the Jews complain. They refuse the very idea that a man may claim to be as such. When they see Jesus, they see the son of Joseph and Mary, they see the fellow Jew. They never knew that it was God incarnate. In the second part of the gospel today, John 6, 43 to 45, Jesus replies to their difficulties. They see only his humanity. For them, all are powerful as his throne in the heavens, and that he manifests his majesty through thunder, lightning, earthquakes, and through great kings, and certainly not through the son of a carpenter. For them, the physical realities, the natural calamities, they will believe that. But the son of carpenter, no, we listen to you another day. And that happens also in our lives, in our spiritual life. How can a man reveal the face of God? How can Father Gutu tell us about God? 
I was in another parish, but I thank God you are good people, parishioners of Upper Hill. As I was going to that parish, uh, some ladies were going to the parish and they said, Company Father, so and so and I'm here, Mass. Ah, you to Rudy. To end, to end, you man. And the other one was saying, Why? I think that man is so boring. Aki, boring. <laughs> we are going to sleep. Better we go home and sleep. Brethren, when you come to the parish church, you come to receive Christ, not that human person, the priest. But remember, a priest is a persona Christi, person of Christ, representation of Christ. Jesus says that nobody has ever seen the Father in verse 46. But if we want to reach God, we have to go through him. Christ as a man is the way for some to reach God. For others, is a hindrance. The God of the pagans they believe in is a God far from us. He rewards the good, but is extremely severe with those who go wrong. The Father revealed by Jesus is different. He loves every man and woman, never punishes anybody, does not get angry with the sinners, rather, he saves them. That is the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the son of a carpenter. Jesus said, no one can come to me unless drawn by my Father. You have to be drawn by the Father to come to Christ. Does God call some and reject others? The answer, brethren, is no. God gives all of us a chance of coming to know him. God has given a chance to all of us, even those who claim they are the atheist community. Even in the atheism, in the midst, God is present. He gives all of us a chance to know him. They will all be taught by God, but not all of us accept the offer. We are all taught by God, but very few of us accept the offer of God. Some of us behave like the Jews at the time of Jesus, who closed their hearts and refused the bread of life. Parishioners, can I say something? In a good way, some of us, we have received, we have refused Christ. In a good way, maybe, in a bad way also. And I gave this example where I was last Sunday. How comes, you may have your reason, that you don't receive the Eucharist, but you get time to get Nyamachoma? That is a bodily food, and you refuse a spiritual food. You may have a difficulty of receiving Christ in the Eucharist, that difficulty go to Christ. Say the way Elijah said, I'm tired, I need strength. We have refused the bread of life when we don't come for the Eucharist. There are people who refuse to learn from the word of God and continue to hold to traditions and habits whose usefulness is long past and only show them to be like pagans of long ago. Some of us, we hold to traditions. Why? Because our spiritual ground is not strong. Recently, I lost a twin cousin. And when I went home, I thought my aunt, who is very strong in faith, would go against the wave. In our tribe, when you give to a twin and one of the twin passes on, the other twin is alive, meaning all of them are alive, you don't cry, and the other twin he will not be there for all the burial rites. From the day he dies until he is buried, he has to evacuate that compound. Now ask my aunt, and the other cousin is not going to be around. He said, young man, our traditions. And we buried our cousin, the other cousins came to our home, we stayed there for the one week of mourning, and after that he came back. 
And now my aunt tries to challenge me. I want him to come and you bless him in front of the grave. I said, no, what you started, finish it. <laughs> Yeah, because brethren, something can happen and they say it is because father did this. He went against the traditions of our fathers. If you start something, hold to it up the last minute. But I tell you, please, let us change and hold to Christ. In conclusion, the last part of today's gospel, verse 48 to 51, Jesus says, to have life, one must eat the bread that is his flesh. Manna in the desert did not give everlasting life. Brethren, we eat nyamachoma, we eat chips, we take soda, we take all kinds of drink, and we die. When you take the Eucharist, you will live beyond. They ate manna, did not give them everlasting life, they died. Whoever is spread from heaven, he will live forever. We must also assimilate Christ, who is the life till becomes part of us. Let us pray in the Eucharist today that good Lord who comes there in the bread which comes from heaven may give us strength, the strength he gave to Elijah. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.